points of passion. And what we're talking about is that this life that God has placed inside of us, this passion that he's placed inside of us, it is vital that you direct it somewhere. Kind of like soda without fizz. If you, as a Christian, do not direct your passion, your love, your zeal for God somewhere, at some point it will dissipate you will become an apathetic, cynical Christian. Don't point at anybody, but have you ever met an apathetic, cynical Christian? <laughs> Somebody who's just waiting to die and go to heaven? How miserable is that? Man, I'm telling you, heaven's going to be so good. They're like 16. <laughs> Man, can't wait for heaven. You know, there's streets of gold up there. No more weeping and gnashing of teeth. It's God bless heaven. Heaven is great. But this is what Jesus said. He said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is now. God never taught us to sit and be comfortable and wait for something that's coming years and years from now. He said, no, you can have an experience with me now. There's something that I desire to do through your life right now. And when I do it in you, I desire to do it through you. Life becomes extremely convoluted when it's constantly focused on yourself. When your entire focus is your own personal progress and gain, let me help you out. It will get confusing. It will get cumbersome. Why? Because God gave you a capacity that was greater than just for yourself. He gave you a capacity to be kingdom-minded and to be focused on things other than simply yourself. Last week we were talking about one of Jesus' passion is the church. Somebody say, that's me. God's passion are the people that call him their Lord and Savior, the people that in which he dwells because he knows that the church is the hope of the world. God knows that if you can just get to a small group, if you can just get into a house of God somewhere around, if you can just connect with people who know God, what's in them and what's on them will get on you. You ever been around a Christian and you just were not having a good day? And it was all the way irritating because they were having a good day? And you're just like, hey, how's it going? Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I'm telling you, I, I was uh, uh, out at the mall this week. And, I, you know, I'm just shopping, walking around. And there was this man, and I don't know if he just got out of choir rehearsal or what. I was at H&M. He's walking through H&M talking about, there's nothing but the blood of Jesus. And I was getting annoyed. I'm just like, and then all of a sudden I started smiling. I was like, you know what? There is nothing but the blood of Jesus. <laughs> People were looking at him like he was crazy. No, why? Because when you get around somebody that has the life of God, when you get around somebody that's had an encounter with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, it just starts rubbing off on you. And Jesus is passionate about we as his church getting around people that need to encounter him. Today I want to talk about how Jesus is passionate about the kingdom of heaven. Jesus is passionate about the kingdom of heaven. When he was talking to his disciples, he said, this is how you should pray. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. If you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the gospels, the kingdom is mentioned 122 times. Constantly, Jesus was saying the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom. He was drawing people's attention to the kingdom. Now, a lot of times, I believe in church. We throw around spiritual words that we have no idea what they mean. Words like sanctification and propitiation. <laughs> what? <laughs> and fornication. It's like, nah. <laughs> Maybe. We just throw all these Asians, and we're just like, it sounds good. It sounds spiritual, but I have no idea what that means. I believe the kingdom is one of those words. Where we'll talk about the kingdom, but we don't quite know what exactly is the kingdom. Matter of fact, if you were to ask the average Christian and say, what's the difference between the church and the kingdom? I don't know. I, I, I thought it was the same thing. Church, kingdom of heaven, God, it's kind of all heaven. I, I don't know. What is the kingdom of heaven? 
You may have heard me say this before, but when you think about the word kingdom, break it down into this. The king's dominion. How many people have been to King's Dominion? I had a story that had nothing to do with this message about the first time I ever got arrested at King's Dominion, but I'm not going to tell that story. Anyway, when you think about King, <laughs> you know that little Eiffel Tower thing that they have at King's Dominion? You know how it says, don't throw anything over? They're kind of serious about that. I didn't know they were that serious, but anyway. It's actually the only time I ever got arrested, but anyway, when you think about Kingdom, I don't think my dad knew that. He's looking at me like, go crazy. <laughs> I'm going to stay over here. But anyway, <laughs> when, you think, when you think about kingdom, think about the king's dominion. In other words, the territory that the king has authority over. Does that make sense? We don't have monarchs in America, but let's say in England, and I don't know what in the world monarchs do in England, but they're the only ones that are still kings and queens and all that. The queen of England has dominion over England. That's her kingdom. Does that make sense? And many of you know, I'm not going to give you a whole history story, but there's this guy and there's this girl named Adam and Eve, and, and they kind of mess things up. God placed them on earth, and he says, take dominion over this whole earth. In other words, earth belongs to you. They decided that they did not want it, so they gave it to the devil. They sinned, and by doing that, they transferred dominion or control from man to the enemy. And from that point on, God has been working to reclaim dominion over this earth. Here's what the kingdom is. The kingdom is anything that's under God's authority. In other words, anything that is relying on God as its source. Anything that is not relying on God as its source may be of another kingdom, but there's only really two kingdoms. There's the kingdom of darkness, so the kingdom of Satan. The Bible calls him the prince of the power of the air. And then there's the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven says God is my Lord. He's my source. He's my provider. He's the truth. He's the one that I rely on. Can I identify the kingdom of, of darkness? might surprise you. The kingdom of darkness says education is the most important thing you can have. If you can just be educated, there's nothing that you can't get around or get through. Ouch. The kingdom of darkness says money is all that you need to rely on. Once you have enough in your savings accounts, once your net worth is enough, there's no situation that you cannot buy your way out of. The kingdom of darkness says that influence is all that you need. Once you have over a thousand followers on Instagram, if you guys could help me out, I would really appreciate the world take over. If you could just help a brother out, I'd appreciate that. But anyway, <laughs> the kingdom of darkness says if you have enough influence, then you will be able to get over. Do, do you recognize how the kingdom of darkness is so subtle? And God says, my desire is that everybody would rest under the kingdom of heaven. In other words, that they would understand that I am their source. I'm the only source that can't fail you. And I'm not going to get anybody discouraged right now, but how many people know that education can fail you? There's so many people with masters and doctorates looking for jobs, can't find them because the market has shifted. Education will fail you. Money will fail you. When you're sitting in an operating room, how much money you have has no weight. Influence will fail you. Ask Joseph. He was like, remember me? No, sorry. Your last week's news. It's the kingdom of heaven that will never fail you. So there's three things that I want to pull out about the kingdom of heaven. Why this is Jesus' passion and why it needs to be our passion. The first thing I need you to write down is that the kingdom is first. The kingdom is first. It is so important that we understand that the kingdom must be the primary focus of our lives. When Jesus came to earth, the first message he preached was this. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. 
In other words, he said, turn from relying on other things and begin to rely on Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, as your source. Now, here's why that's so important. Because at that time, the Jewish people were used to living under the kingdom of Rome. They were used to being slaves. They were used to being under a wicked king. They had to pay taxes for everything. If they wanted to drive from Baltimore to D.C., they had to pay taxes. Wait, we do that already. <laughs> Baltimore to Gaithersburg, you got to swipe the card or you're getting a ticket in the mail. But whatever, it is a bad kingdom. But anyway, everything that they wanted to do, they had to ask permission. Every once in a while, they had to go for a census and be counted so they're sure that they're taxing. They were used to being under a kingdom that was a kingdom of pressure. 